Welcome. My name is Mustafa Feyyaz Sombulak. I'm working as a senior game designer in Northeastern University. I'm also teaching game design courses there. And my background is I'm a art major, uh, undergrad, graphic designer, then worked in indus uh, advertisement industry and magazines over the Italy, Portugal, and Turkey. Then I joined master program in Northeast University as a game science and design. And I graduated there. And after that, I got offered a job and I'm working for there for one year, two years, I'm sorry. And right now uh, we published two papers and I'm currently working on engineering game, but I'm gonna talk about the games we published during the COVID, which is uh, we designed uh, to understand what's gonna happen in future and we designed for research purposes. So I'm starting with that. First, let's introduce to my team. Uh, Reedy moved on to uh, another game design job, but she was there with me. My professors, Giovanni Maria Triano and Casper Hardefeld. And the rest of the group is Matthew Wood, Utkarsh, Omid, and Nitesh that also helped about this game and paper. And this is our team on Northeast University too. So this is our game is we called it What's Next, a story completion game about COVID-19. And the reason why we did that is it's because we asked during the COVID when the, in March, I remember it was pretty going bad. We asked how can game design can help during this time. And we, from this quote, we kind of go go around during this time, reshape the future using methods such as scenarios, design fictions, and participatory design and involving the people with whom we will share this feature. So we quite affected by this code by Peter Daskar is a researcher. And, and we asked questions, as I said, how game design can help. And we look at the other examples and other uh, academia, so how we can help. So we wanted to investigate the future post future of post COVID spe spe speculative research. I'm sorry that I can't pronounce that thing very well. So what is speculative research? Speculative research is gamification and story completion method and when their intersection is speculative research. But let's go over the, what is gamification? Gamification is using the game game uh, mechanics and game elements in, and using in game design in non-game contexts. So uh, you can say Duolingo or other drops, those, those language teaching programs actually is gamification for example, and what the story completion method is a psychoanalytic method where patients are asked by therapeutic practitioners to complete write stories based on existing story stems. So we combine these two to create a COVID game to understand the future, get a glimpse of future and also help the community. So we are not, first of all, we are not the first one doing that. In designing our gamified uh, story accomplished method, we were really inspired by alternative reality game called World Without Oil. If you folks know about it, it's a World Without Oil is a game that people imagine the world with story stamps. What, what's going to happen after the oil ended? Because it's a finite source. And people tell stories, write news, and actually uh, it gives out of glimpse of future, how we can move to renewable energy and this also influences a lot and we get out of uh, their work as influence and we build on top of it. So what is Study Crafter? We make this game in Story Crafter. Story Crafter is a quick video I prepared and I hope frame rate goes well with it. So, Story Crafter is we uh, before I 
join the program. It was developing from 2015 as a tool. You can make games. It's free, storycrafter.com. And you can use it web based or you can download on your uh, devices and use it. It's a very easy way to, without coding, make games. And usually we use it in university and academia, make games about research purposes. And sorry about that. OK, let's look at the game. So when we uh, now and now we're not collecting data right now. So OK. So I'm going to skip a tutorial and I explain why I'm skipping the tutorial later on. So as you can see, game starts and Sal, we choose as a gender neutral name. And first things uh, players has to fill, they're looking at the window. And we gather those story stems and interactions with players. And, and there's other things like, for example, Sam uh, posting a Facebook post Sam uh, getting a notification from his uh, from uh, their phone and what is notification? What they write on the Facebook? Someone calling Sal. Who's calling it? Who's calling them? And this kind of prompts and also what they think about uh, what they think about the future. We kind of in uh, try to ensure the idea about giving a protag giving the player a protagonist to go behind this mask so they can share their very uh, honest opinions about it. Gamification is important here because if you ask gamification and story completion method is important here because when research, if you ask people questions as an interview format, they will give you the answer, quote to quote, right answer or community accepted answers. But in the gamified story completion method, people can behave like someone else, but actually they're behaving like themselves. Is uh, we also write in the paper that in Oscar Wilde code that give a man a mask, then he will tell you the truth. And we actually give in a gamif gamification, we give users a mask, so they can be honest as much as they want to be, because there's no uh, guilty guilty or uh, throwback. So the things about we. The uh, this paper is published in Design of Interaction Systems in 2021. It will be available online soon for everyone. And these are data. Three of them was pretty uh, pretty interesting. But the actually, right now, I will talk about the. Uh, I'm pointing at the moon. Stop looking at my finger. This is the we didn't see that coming part. So, but let's talk. About, let's go over the data results of our game. Masks versus no mask. This is pretty important because we stopped gathering data in July. And at July with the with this game, we actually right now we are arguing about after vaccinations, should we still wear mask or not wear mask? But in the game, players already discussing that a year ago. We we because we let game make them imagine the future and what's gonna happen, and we were already started initiated that conversations in our community. So face mask also took an important role in stories. A lot of people think is a personal choice. A lot of people think still is a mandatory, but a lot of think, uh, but for sure is mask is normal now. After we people, even though everyone vaccinated, maybe there's a loss, we will not look at people from our story stems. We will not, people doesn't think that it's people who wear, still wear mask they are like weirdos or like why are still wearing masks? They're accepted. Now it's a new normal. So however, uh, this this also our P, P, P20 is participant 20, participant 20, uh, 20 participants. Sal goes, people going about their business, some are rain, some aren't. And it means that normality is not mandated by presence or not of mask. In this way, many stories gave a sense of changed world to us. People accepted and people 
now we are moving on to the new world and we i kind of highlighted some stories that we got sal goes up because he can go out he's finally maskless some some players are really uh, get tired of mask even though it was just four months in to the uh, our pandemic and lockdown and uh, one one other participant that while south people seeing south sees people jogging and walking while wearing masks even people who are moving their lounge wear masks some people walk in their mask and chatting with each other while wearing masks so even though they imagine a post-covid future a lot of people get tired of mask a lot of people still think mask gonna be mandated but it's still for sure is accepted so a new normal arrange in our data a sense of quietness was common throughout the stories a new normal with decrease of social activity that one just accepted by population and with out of dystopian scenarios occurred in a new normal people and we when we look at it players were pretty accepted of dystopian they were thinking that there will be uh, sidewalks will, will be more silent there will be less cars more nature and people actually uh 60 percent of participants actually think is a positive thing only 40 percent of that thing is a bad thing because they want cherishing the streets more people uh more more voice more loud but six percent were very accepted and uh, it's a good thing so and other things that new normal become most things are delivered these days this is this code stick with us and also the second thing dystopian someone who recently tested positive for covid was at the park if you are not being vaccinated you should leave immediately and get tested immediately so these things kind of also stick with us and we highlighted in paper that uh the apps that kind of kind of apps and uh governments uh issues that gives you heads up and actually this has become a normal too can if someone become COVID in your pack you i don't know if you want to know or not to know you want to get tested or not get tested these are pretty uh blurred lines that about privacy and security i think we also encourage the community to discuss about this and politics we incurred a lot of politics during this uh, data collection it's mainly about donald trump because there, there was donald trump administration at that point and trump administration claims as a fake uh, trump administration claims there are new zero cases of COVID, and donald trump test positive for COVID 21. that was pretty funny for us because they out of one, one couple of parts not a lot i'm sorry a couple of parts one thing that it would be COVID 20 COVID 21 COVID, that will go on like that because the virus is I think evolving and but all the parts when coming to the pandemic with Trump administration there was a lot of quotes we gather that Donald Trump if Donald Trump leaves the office the COVID kind of decrease or go away they there's they people connected a lot to that politics and pandemic which is quite interesting that how uh, game of guy research give you about the uh, politics and how social i mean uh, uh, social construct evolving around that okay so for me these were the boring parts now we we parts that actually made us now we're writing another paper about this that we didn't see that coming is we call mommy's boys and facebook is dead so let's talk about with mommy's boys because I, I as i said to you folks that sal gets a phone call and hook people uh, players has to fill who calls them and 99 of the male participants feel that their moms and only 55 percent of female feel their moms and females more about fem people who identified as a female i'm sorry they they said that they there were more variation like significant other their dads their friends but for for males only mom except one acceptance only mom that was pretty funny for us and other thing that we find out between the participant age 18 and 27 they not using facebook anymore because there was as you remember 
uh, Sal gets uh, Sal posting in Facebook, and they all age participant age between 18 to 27. They say Facebook is the most shitty platform I ever used. This is the last post. Bye bye. I should not be using Facebook anymore. Does anyone know more ethical alternative to social media? So, uh, uh, and there, every every participant between 18 to 27 think Facebook is dead and they're not using it. So we kind of also sidetrack. We, we didn't include those in the paper, but these are the interesting data points that actually gives you a lot of uh, a lot of future glimpses of social media and other things you didn't expect to see. So that's why, uh, I'm sorry, that's why it's pretty important to make games for research purposes and actually uh, take them seriously. And we should move on as a, we should maybe even develop those ideas and uh, design systems that we can actually initiate some topics that we should, we should start so much earlier. Right now, mask versus no mask. So other things that designing games for research, since I've been into for two years, that is different than designing games for uh, players per se, or any other fun, because anything you do in research paper, re research this game, that you, you, cannot, you cannot influence any bias. And if you include any bias, that that game and that paper will be rejected and you will be work for nothing. So you have to be really careful. It's like Ren and Margaret said, this is not a pipe. So you have to really, anything you put in the game, any, any gender, any race, any color, everything, everything matters in value while designing games for research. And you have to be very careful about it. And especially if you wanna write data report and papers of scientific papers about it. And other thing about, Designing games for research, it's you be, since you are not designing for uh, players, but there's a lot of players in the world. But still, you, your data set is pretty wide, and your game has a tutorial, has as a tutorial or holding hat mechanics at the start of your game because people, in my experience, and my experience so far with three research based games. People really, some uh, some folks really can't comprehend at the start how game works, and you have to be respectful to that. And as a funny thing, that it actually happens like this: you give a game, and players act like this. And this is you have to be really careful about it because it also can uh, ruin your research game. So, and. With that, I want to say thank you. Thank you for listening to me. And if you have any questions, or if you wanna, if you want me to go over other papers that we did about research and research-based games, feel free to ask. Thank you. Uh, hey. Hello. I hear more about like what you're planning on looking at in the future. Like, what's the what's the next area that you're fascinated by? Where are you gonna take it? Well, I'm gonna take it right now. We are thinking about, uh, as I we talked before, uh, how we can use VR and uh, use VR to rain, gaze, uh, increase empathy and sympathy towards minorities and sicknesses. Right now, uh, I'm working on a paper, also game design, with how cancer, cancer uh, patients' family feels, or how cancer. I'm sorry about that. Uh, how uh, cancer patients feel during this during the pandemic also how they feel so we try we're creating a VR experience that they go through one day in chemotherapy that you can wear a headset and go through and what they see and what they how they experience stuff and it, that experience gives you a lot raising empathy so therefore we are trying to help the under uh, underrepresented I'm imagining helping underrepresented societies and out of helpful game design can help out because we are just tapping into game design just to start. This is just a start. We game gamification can help a lot of things. That's why I think of and I think we just I'm trying to go away from fun side of the games because I think going fun side is just like a limiting myself. I want to explore more and help more and give more.
as a person. Hello. Hi. Can you talk a little about the study crafting platform you use? Yeah. Is that something you created or like or why did you choose it or uh it's 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 created at 2015 by Northeast University and currently my boss Casper Hardefeld. And it's a is a web based or you can download on your computer that for research purposes or you can do anything with it. Uh, it's pretty easy to use interface and we did it because we gamification uh, in, in certain game uh, adapting gamification and research as academia was going on new thing and I joined the pro I joined the Starcraft in 2019 and we're developing right now I think this summer we're gonna add character creator right now we are we were using already the drone assets but right now we're adding people can create their characters or uh, interactive NPCs in that platform and it's uh we're gonna also they change the website but studycrafted.com you can you can check it out and it's pretty simple and pretty easy if you also data collections already set by the server so you don't have to worry about database setting in html or something hello 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 um how much do you think vr will affect the experience on um what you're trying to do versus like a traditional game uh in traditional game because uh in traditional games only first persons in as a i'm thinking about data not my opinion uh first person view makes players remember more and empathize more so we cannot if you want to do something that player to empathize someone First person is your go-to as a data, but you can also accomplish that third person, which is Last of Us, can accomplish with the storytelling and other characters, communication with other characters. But as a VR, you can, you if if you see the world from actually, you know, the term that uh, uh, filling their shoes, like go take their shoes, you can be someone else, not in a uh in a 24-inch uh, screen you can be someone else 360 around and everywhere you can see what they see you can you can experience what they experience immediately without game of, uh without the mechanics of game and vr can help us a lot with that because data suggests that first person increase empathy and sympathy a lot and i think new research with the vr that will be even more high to you uh, play, uh, users will feel empathy and sympathy towards that they filling their shoes for. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And if you, uh, if you folks wants to uh, chat with, chat with me or uh, talk about a lot of other things that we all, I also published a paper about esports and gender bias in esports uh, in Kai. Uh, computer human interaction this this year and i can talk about that that's my because i'm also i was playing uh professional esports before so i feel uh i feel not mm, as a mission that i need to explore because when i was playing esports there was no that not was so much uh, females per se at that point it was 2013 and i was like right now why we still have still have less females in that scene so and also game design and also about graphic design and art yeah uh, you can reach me out from my personal link a uh, personal email i can write on the chat and if you want to follow me on twitter and we can follow back each other okay i think this was the if anyone wants more ask more questions or chat around and thank you for everything thank you for for the coming and I'm glad to meet you all. Thank you.